Hey guys, it's your girl Brandy, aka Brandy4. Oh, welcome back to my channel. Welcome to my channel. If you are new here, I do lots of videos on pop culture, reality TV, etc. etc. So if you like any of those things, make sure bleh, bleh, sorry y'all, I'm a little rusty. Make sure you subscribe to my channel. I recently watched Megan the Stallion's documentary, which is now on Amazon Prime. It's called Megan the Stallion in her words. When I heard about the documentary, it was kind of random. I think I just like saw a random post on Twitter somewhere about it. People were kind of just like going in on Tory Lane. Well, my algorithm anyways doesn't like Tory Lanez. <laughs> I was just seeing all these women just coming at him, coming at Kelsey, just about how they turned their backs on Meg and how unfair they were to her. Like the same old, same old that I've been hearing. I know a lot of people have varying opinions around the whole shooting situation. Me personally, I'm team Megan. I definitely think Tory Lanez shot her in the foot. I also think Kelsey is fake, but We'll just get into that more. And when I approached the documentary, I wasn't approaching it as like, oh, this is gonna be like such a great documentary. Because quite frankly, I feel like most celebrity documentaries that have been made over like the past five years or so, they have not really been that like groundbreaking. Kind of paint a narrative around how they have such a hard life. Being a celebrity, I'm sure is hard, but then also it's like i can't really connect to this struggle that you're dealing with because at the end of the day you have way more resources than i do i kind of approached this documentary in that way i was like okay i feel like it's just gonna be another documentary that where we don't really learn much about the celebrity it's gonna be just very generic very industry-esque but no i stand corrected it was actually a very good documentary like i was shocked 50 minutes of watching documentary i'm like all right that's enough but this documentary like it had my attention the entire time and it's mainly because it really showed me a different side to megan the stallion we are so used to seeing megan the stallion happy we're used to seeing her so confident. We're just so used to seeing her like have incredible work ethic. Yeah, she's just always very energetic, very hype, always hyping everyone up. Just a very positive energy. So when this documentary did come out, I was thinking, oh, we're just gonna see like, oh, the Megan just turning up with everybody, just trying to make everybody happy. I kind of thought she was gonna gloss over the fact that she lost her mother. I didn't think it would be like that big um of a topic in this documentary so i'm so glad that it was a huge topic in this documentary because it just showed me a whole different side to her like it really put her entire career into perspective for me of like why she is the way she is currently what why she was doing the things that she was doing before like back in 2019 because yeah it's just it just really puts things into perspective but most of all it kind of just makes me very sad as a black woman just seeing how people will turn on you in an instant when they see that you are you know so confident in yourself that you are so comfortable in your sexuality you just have a positive aura around you like regardless of what you're going through you it's just crazy how much black women have to deal with all the scrutiny that we have to deal with when we do one thing that may not be right. You know, like once someone does one thing, once one of us does like one thing that may be questionable, everyone turns on you immediately. And it's kind of like nobody looks and thinks, what is this person going through to make them do this thing? Instead, it's like, oh, you're just defining me based on what you're seeing me wear, what you're seeing me rap about. like. And it's kind of like, okay, let's actually like look at who this person actually is instead of you just um, projecting your feelings on how you feel about a black woman who is so comfortable in her sexuality and her body and showing off her body. Like, let's actually like see this person as a human being. So yeah, basically I kind of just want to talk about the disrespect that Meg had to deal with over these past few years, dealing with this entire Tory Lane situation but also just the whole idea of fame really not 
being as glamorous as we all thought it was like it's actually crazy now that i'm old now not that i'm old but now that i'm older i'm really starting to see like fame is not where it's at i really used to want to be famous i'm sure everyone who like grew up on disney channel and like nickelodeon had wanted to become like a famous superstar once in their life um, that was definitely me. I still have random fantasies in my head. I ain't gonna hold you. These days, I'm like, yeah, these celebrities, um, they don't have a life that I envy. <laughs> it's not, it's not cute. Especially right now, around these social media times, you're having everyone and their mom's unwarranted, unsolicited opinion about every little thing that you do. And I'm not gonna act like I'm holier than thou and be like, oh yeah, I don't have opinions on celebrities because I definitely do and i do voice them obviously on my youtube but it's still just like dang sometimes i feel like people take things not sometimes almost all the time fans take things too far and they forget that these celebrities are human beings in the documentary like it kind of starts off on her just like talking about how she came up and it's crazy because it it, it seems like she really started like actually going out there around like 2016 or so um, she was like performing at like schools malls etc always had her mom on her side and she actually got her rap influence from her mom because her mom is a rapper so she basically just had her mom kind of just managing her entire career just being her number one mentor being her number one fan always looked to her mom for advice on performing because that's just all she grew up with that's all she saw growing up and that's why she's as talented as she is like she got all of her talent from her mom like it's actually crazy like how she just she is as talented as she is because of her mom and it's just it's actually a beautiful thing to see seeing that obviously like her mom pushing her to just be great and to keep going out there and putting herself out there and even like encouraging her to be comfortable in her sexuality like that is why she is as big as she is now like that is why she was able to make a name for herself because she had the support of her mom and when you have that support from a parent it actually really makes a huge difference in your life the fact that she lost her mom during the biggest moment of her career broke me that broke me and it's crazy because you would have never known you would have never known. Like I vaguely remember her Instagram post on her mother's passing, but after that, all you saw was Megan. She was just working. She was working, working, work. Like it was nonstop work. She didn't have time to grieve. Mainly because she was kind of saying how my mom wouldn't have wanted me to just like lay low, just like feel sorry for myself. She already knew. She was like, look, I'm just going to keep going. Um, I know this is what my mom wanted to do. However, with her mom passing, it did make things more difficult for her, considering she always looked to her mom for the answers. Whenever she would do anything in her career just or in just life in general, she would always be like, mom, what do you think? She always looked to her mom to like give her that guidance. So the fact that she lost her dad and now her mom, both parents, she didn't have anyone to actually guide her especially becoming a huge celebrity a, a national name people know you everywhere in the united states to not have that guidance anymore that's hard because now instead of you know having her mom on her side giving her the tips you know telling people no when she won't necessarily know what to say no because mind you 2019 how old was she she was like 23 that's young that's very young to be making huge life decisions especially as a celebrity so like her not having her mom in her life, like it just kind of turned her into a yes man. It kind of, on one hand, it's like, I understand her, like just keep going, like pushing herself um, and keep touring, et cetera. Like, you know, accepting opportunities. Cause obviously like if she didn't do that, she wouldn't be as big as she is now. However, I think that is what led to her downfall, her, not necessarily like downfall, but like everything that happened after that. Her just being so accepting, being a yes man, just not really knowing where to turn because when you're dealing with grief, you don't necessarily, you're not thinking straight. You're not thinking straight. 
So like she doesn't know how to deal with this newfound fame. She hasn't even dealt with the her mother's passing. So she's kind of just like going with the motions. She's being managed by all these different people who don't care about her and her well-being. They only care about making money. So when you have all these things going on, all these factors in play, like obviously there are going to be challenges that come. And seeing how positive Meg is, you can tell like she definitely is a people pleaser. You can tell people like her are people pleaser. I'm a people pleaser AF. So that's how I could tell. I'm like, yeah, she's definitely a people pleaser. So obviously she's not gonna tell people no. She's gonna wanna, you know, hang out with every celebrity who like bats an eye at her because obviously this is newfound fame. When you're just becoming famous and with her, she's just like a regular, normal Houston girl who got famous. So obviously she's like, oh, this celebrity wants to hang out with me. This rapper wants to hang out with me. Obviously, I'm not going to say no to that. So what was she doing? She was just hanging out with everyone and their mom, despite not everyone being good for her or just good people who had genuine intentions. She was just hanging out with everybody because everybody was probably putting in her air like, oh, um, if you do this, you know, we can make it big. If you do that, like, I'll always have your back, da da da. People were probably saying that to her. And then another thing I found interesting, because, like, even during the time, like, even during, like, 2019, 2020, you always saw Meg. Meg was always, like, branded with the Douce. I swear, Douce, I only knew Douce because of Meg. She would do the driving the boat with everybody and their mom. She would always be, you know, taking shots with people, etc. And at the time, since I was in college, I'm thinking, oh, like, okay, this is just her being lit. This is just her being in college, being her lit self. Um, like, it's just normal. However, little did I know, little did a lot of people know, this is her just grieving. <laughs> this is her drinking her sorrows away. This is her coping with alcohol in a very toxic manner. Um, not just for fun, literally just for like numbing purposes, which is actually so unfortunate and so sad because I didn't even, I, I didn't even put two, two and two together, mainly because I kind of just like, I knew that her mom passed, but I was kind of like, she was just didn't appear to be upset. So I didn't think like, oh, okay, her mom passed. It just really put everything into perspective as to why she was doing the things she was doing. Seeing that obviously like she's drinking a lot, she's partying a lot, she's hanging out with all types of new people in the industry. Um, of course she meets Tory Lanez and she actually admitted she was like I the only reason why I became close with him is because he mentioned how he lost his mom and that's something that we connected with her already being in such a vulnerable spot and she you know makes a friend in the industry this guy he's like look I went through the same thing I'm gonna have your back etc etc and it all just going downhill from there her best friend she, she had promised to be by her side be there for her like after she had lost her mom. So her losing her best friend as well, it was just, I feel for her. And I'm seeing like a lot of opinions around her not being a good friend to Kelsey, which I agree. Like if it was the case in which Kelsey was dating Tory Lanez and Meg had hooked up with him behind her back, that's not being a good friend. However, my problem with Kelsey is that she saw Tory Lane shoot Megan instead of her being like yeah I saw this this is what actually happened you say nothing you say absolutely nothing and it's just like I understand that Megan did this to her and it hurt her at the end of the day though she could have died she could have died one and two you know that she's dealing with two back-to-back -back deaths because not only did she deal with her mom's death she also dealt with her grandma's death as well so you knowing that she dealt with two back-to-back -back deaths three deaths in total in her life is kind of like and seeing you seeing that she got shot and could have died you aren't gonna fully admit that she got shot you're that hurt by her hooking up with this guy that you cannot admit that she got shot by tori lane's and it's just like, okay, Meg, yeah, she did you dirty, but also Tory Lanez also did you dirty then. So why not put him on blast? 
Like, if anything, at the end of the day, you have more loyalty to Meg than to Tori. Despite Meg doing that thing, I'm not saying she's a victim in that sense. It's still, she is still a victim because she got shot at the end of the day. Like, that is a fact. <laughs> that's a fact. She didn't just make that up. So that's what, like, really grind my gears about the entire situation. It was kind of like a double standard type of thing from Kelsey because it's like, girl, you're mad at your best friend that did this to you, but you're not mad at the guy that you were seeing that did this to you and did that to her. It doesn't make any sense. And then on top of that, now with the entire Tory Lanez thing, um... After Tory Lanez tried and failed with bribing Meg to keep quiet and keep hush about the situation, then he starts going on Twitter and telling everybody she's a liar, she's a liar, going on live saying she's a lie, blah, 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 oh yeah, hooked up with her. All these rappers, all of these singers co-signing him, Chris Brown, Joe Budden, academics, even LeBron James dancing to his music on his story after everything that's coming out even bro they even had a video of tori lanes and diddy on live and diddy said something along the lines of like he said something basically diddy said something along the lines of like handling it which is never a good thing if you know what's going on with the diddy stuff right now so it's kind of just like wow seeing all of these rappers turn on meg just like that even though she's a victim. Interesting. Why Why are they turning on her? It's interesting. They see this black woman who kind of admittedly said like, look, if y'all see me as an object, but I see men as an object. Like she said that she's like, look, I could, like men don't run me. <laughs> like I run men. <laughs> Not in those words, obviously from her, one of her songs I'm quoting. But like, yeah, she's very confident in herself, you know, very tall, bodacious, big booty thick girly <laughs> and men who are so threatened by women especially black women who are so confident in their sexuality and could care less what a man thinks and so when they see any opportunity to tear a black woman down who is as confident as she is they're gonna take it all these abusers they co-sign each other like it doesn't matter it does not matter and I just find it so interesting that even fans are co-signing them as well, especially black women fans. I just look at y'all sideways every time when I see you co-signing Tory Lanez. This man had a whole music video of him cutting up a horse leg in reference to Meg being shot in the leg. And you guys thought that was funny? You guys didn't think that's weird? You didn't think that was weird at all that that happened? I find that I find that weird that no one thought that was weird and y'all still support him. Free Tory Lanes? Why? Why we, why are we why are we saying free Tory Lanes? Why are we saying that? And even if she did lie, everybody is like using the excuse of, "Oh yeah, this doesn't make her credible. This doesn't make any this doesn't make her argument credible at all." blah 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 blah. She told the truth in court. That's all that matters. Did she have to tell the truth to Gail King in front of millions of people on national television you can literally tell like in the interview too she was like caught off guard by that comment she was like i feel like in my thinking is like the reason why she lied was because no one actually knows that i betrayed my friend and i don't want people to know that i betrayed my friend and that's why i'm lying that's why i think she lied and it's literally i, I feel like it's as simple as that too everybody's like Oh, she lied because she's just a liar, period. And she lied about getting shot in the... No, no. No, I feel like in that particular moment, she was like, oh, I don't want to expose the fact that I slept with my friend's man. Like, that was really it. And then another thing about the documentary that I found interesting was just how overworked she was and how, once again, her team could care less. When I saw Lorianne Gibson... In the documentary, I was like, why am I not surprised this girl is pushing Meg the way she is? I don't, if y'all have seen Making the Band, y'all know Lorianne. She has not changed in the slightest. <laughs> like, in the slightest. This girl is clearly tired, overworked. She looks dehydrated. She looks like she's about to pass out. 
Maria's like, well, this is the name of the game. I know you have like, I'm like, yo, are people not allowed to take a break? The girl was working and that you see, and that's the thing. That's where she needed her mom in this sense. Like she needed her parent to be like, look, you look tired. It's time to take a break. She didn't have that support system. It doesn't matter your notoriety. It doesn't matter your status. Like you'll always be the most disrespected as a black woman. It does not matter. Like men don't respect you. I'm not saying all men, like men, those types of men. And then also their co-signers, those men's co-signers. So even black women who are coming at her like, oh, but she's a liar, she's a liar. Do you not love yourself? Like, I just don't understand black women who can watch her story, watch her pain and still be like, I support Tori. I will never understand that. Like you're a trash human being encourage everyone to watch it because it really did show me a different completely different side to meg i was so so impressed by this documentary i feel like this is like one of the best celeb documentaries i've seen and i was very impressed by the fact that she documented so much of her life and career like i, I was very impressed by that so yeah ugh this and it just made me want to support her even more i'm like yo you know what let me listen to her album right now like i love megan stallion i hope she gets even more flowers i'm glad that tory lanes is spending 10 years in prison because as he should and yeah i'm glad that she keeps getting the bag and i hope she heals from her mother her grandma and her father's death because death is really a hard hard thing to deal with like if you've never dealt with grief before obviously everyone will eventually deal with grief but it's not it's not something to play with like that is nothing that is something you cannot get over you can only just i don't even know can you fully heal from death because i know i'm not healed <laughs> so i'm kind of like I, you kind of just learn how to live with it but yeah it's like it's a day by day thing you just gotta take it day by day but yeah, it was a very interesting watch. But yeah, let me know your thoughts about the documentary in the comments below. Let me know your thoughts um, on whatever I said. And make sure you like this video. And subscribe to your girl Brandy4 for more content. I will be putting out more content. So, bye!